Hello there, today we're going to look at Transformer FAM Feedback Attention is Working Memory by a group of researchers out of Google. This paper adds what they call feedback attention to transformers and they do so in an attempt to build a concept of working memory. Working memory in neuroscience is the thing that you kind of short term hold stuff in to do stuff with like think if I have to kind of multiply along numbers, wherever in my head, I keep the in between results, whenever I read a bit of text, wherever I kind of remember the intermediate things that then I, I synthesize. So rather than long term memory, which we usually consider to be, you know, the weights of the neural network, because we train it with stuff. Uh, the short term memory is as of yet limited to the context size of the transformer. And this paper adds, you know, this feedback attention to extend that uh, working memory. Now, this here is couched in the language of neuroscience, I want to say like, okay, they say, you know, if in the, in the prefrontal cortex, there is this concept of, um, of working memory, and actually, we can just jump to jump to the relevant passages, they say in the human brain, working memory provides a temporary memory for performing tasks. While working memory is stored in sustained activations, long term memory is stored in weights. Um, blah, blah, blah. The activation of working memory is sustained by prefrontal cortical thalamic loops which means memory working memory is sustained by the continuous spiking of activation within a feedback loop, essentially saying that the way working memory is kept is so some sort of neuron fires out. And then there is some sort of feedback, this could be to the same neuron or to the same layer or something like this. And through this kind of continuous spiking, essentially, that activation is kept alive uh, for a short term. So it's not stored in connection strength somewhere. It's just that if you have a group of neurons firing out like this, and this and this, uh, the fact that they kind of feedback to themselves keeps that activation going. Their goal here is to build something like this into transformers. And yeah. So what they end up doing is if you have a transformer or any neural network uh, that has multiple layers and processes sequences in multiple chunks, they say, so think of this as a sliding window approach or a chunk based transformer, which is also what they compare with what they say is, uh, there is already work in in sort of uh, taking the output here and feeding it back in here. But those are more like top down feedback, what we mean by working memory because of neuroscience and so on, what we actually need to make this working memory a reality is a feedback from the sort of the layer to itself in the same kind of the same layer. And so you take you want to take the output of that layer and feed it into the input of that same layer again for the next chunk. And yes, yes, if you followed uh, my, even my recent video, yes, this is just another paper reinventing a recurrent neural network. I, I don't I don't know, I don't I don't get it. Uh, we have gone from recurrent neural networks, uh, have added attention to them, then we came up with transformers, then the the first transformer papers who <laughs> were sort of extending the context length, there are some linear attention methodologies, but there were already, you know, combinations of RNNs and transformers. Um, yet, in recent times, for some reason, people keep reinventing the concept of an RNN, and calling it different things with vague or none, or sometimes uh, references to the original RNNs. But yeah. Now, if this reminds you of another paper called Transformer XL, that's because it kind of is, except Transformer XL essentially just says, hey, we'll take the output here. 
and I'll just feed it in here. And in between, we we just don't back propagate the gradient, because that would just fill up all our memory, right? If you have to back propagate the gradient through all of this, that's going to be a big hassle. In recurrent neural networks, this is typically done. And this is called back propagation through time. So you have your input signals, and those produce these kind of hidden states um, that go into the next Okay, the amount of space and so on. So you would generally, if you have some loss here, you would generally try to back propagate through time, uh, which means that the network can not only learn to read from the past information, because that's what you're passing forward, but it can also learn which information to even store in the hidden states. So that back propagation from the loss to the function that actually updates the hidden state is important, because you can update the state in a, in a targeted fashion. And you don't have to, um, you don't have to just blindly update the state. And then the, 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 the only improvement is reading from the state. Okay. So this paper here will actually in uh, opposition to transformer XL will actually uh, learn at least from what I can gather from the paper, learn to update this hidden state, um, they call that feedback attention, working memory, whatever, I don't care. This is an RNN. This is a hidden state, they learn to update the hidden state, just like an RNN, <laughs> using back propagation, they call it back propagation through the update mechanism, I don't care, it's back propagation through time. So this is an RNN, where it doesn't go over individual tokens, it goes over blocks of tokens. Okay, so the recurrent nature is over the blocks, the blocks within each other are just regular uh, causal transformer sort of decoder transformer attention blocks. And then there is a hidden state in between, and then there is a function that updates the hidden state and feeds that hidden state into the the next um, the next block at the same layer. So, you know, take all of this talk of neuroscience and feedback and working memory out, and you're left with an RNN. Now, all right, yada, 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 what they mostly compare with is this blockwise attention. So blockwise attention is a way to enable transformers to go over long sequences. And it's an evolution of the uh, sliding window attention, sliding window attention essentially says, how about instead of what a regular transformer would do is if you have a long sequence is, for example, if you produce this node, it would attend to all of the past. And if you produce this node, it would attend to all of the past. Now, that would give you an attention matrix that's essentially, if you look at which token attends to which token, okay, this token attends to all of the past. And then this token attends to all of the past. And you can already see the longer, sorry, the longer your sequences get here, um, you essentially have a quadratic. So you have essentially the length times the length divided by two uh, computations that you have to do. So the sliding window attention just says, how about every token only looks back a finite amount of tokens. So every token only gets to look back to the last 10 tokens. And it has to deal with that, right? So that's what you can see right here. This is a sliding window of size three. Every token just looks back three tokens. And uh, that works. But obviously, if you want to do if you if your task requires to integrate information across more than the last x tokens, you're out of luck, because producing token number 31 can only look back to tokens number 20 to 30. And if important information was there in token number 10, yeah, that's it, you, you will not you will not be able to read that as you produce this, um, this, this token, uh, there is another 
another variant which is blockwise self attention or uh, this right here which is a bit of an evolution but essentially you just say okay uh, we divide this into these blocks and you can attend to past blocks so uh, you can see right here the this is just because of memory layout and so on it's more performant and it's not really um so the the extra the extra for example this this computation here is extra but because of memory layout as far as i understand it doesn't really hurt so it's really easy to extend the sliding window attention to the block wise sliding window attention uh, without too much of a performance hit just because of how the current hardware is laid out but you can see here still the same principle like every token produced has a finite look back um, to past tokens this was exactly the the situation and yeah you can do two memory segments and then it's just a bit of a higher finite look back but still a finite look back this was exactly the situation where um where you would uh where you what should i say this was exactly the situation when n-gram models were in and so on because n-gram models are exactly that you just look at the last three letters and then you produce the next one and you can't integrate information across many of those things and exactly to overcome that rnns were invented right so we're just repeating this evolution now their point here is that well the effective receptive field here is you can see does grow as you grow the layers so because you look back x many tokens in one layer but you obviously integrate the information from the bottom layers um the bottom layers also look back x many tokens so if you on this layer look back three tokens then this computation right here also look back looked back three tokens in its respective layer and so on. so your effective receptive field does grow with depth but neuroscience tells us that you know feedback connections should be on the same layer not from one layer down and they're trying to differentiate themselves through this kind of oh we, we do the feedback on the same layer we, we extend the context length on the same layer uh yeah yeah so what they ultimately end up doing and this is the drawing here what they ultimately end up doing is they're going to add these special tokens to each block they're still going to process text in block they're going to add these special tokens right here now the special tokens are a memory so these special tokens are essentially um they come from the last block they're copied here when you produce the next token you are allowed to not only attend to the past you know sliding window of tokens like this token or this token or this token you're also allowed to attend to these memory tokens right here again the memory tokens are a compressed they contain a compressed representation of the past uh, on the other hand you also have these things here which are you produce next layer you produce next layer representations of your memory so what these are supposed to do these here are supposed to gather information from the current block and so that you can take whatever has been computed and copy it over here so you can see this is going to be the next blocks memory so these tokens are special tokens that learn how to aggregate the current block including the memory of the last block right and that's what you copy over to the next block again these tokens will learn how to compress the current block plus the memory into the next block so it's conceivable that because every computation of the next block's memory can always attend not only to the current block's data but also to the 
memory that's present in the current block, which is a result of the last block's computation. You can see it's conceivable that memory gets copied, 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 copied throughout the blocks. And therefore, it's conceivable that um, that some piece of information gets kept infinitely long. So that's it. They do, they do a lot of convoluted stuff right here. For example, they, you could do this in a much more easy way, they still maintain this kind of blocks, like they still say, Oh, there is the current block. And then there is the last block. And that last block somehow contains these memory things and the current block also contains some and so on, you like the whole block wise thing, you could just drop like th this has essentially nothing to do with this. If you want to simplify this, you can say, I have a sequence of tokens. Okay, I um, divide them into blocks. So these are my two blocks in this case. All right, I'm going to learn to produce new tokens. Okay, I am going to make query tokens and aggregate information. So this can attend to this this can attend to these two, this can attend to these three, this is regular, let's say causal um, attention, then I'm going to have a special token that can attend also to the whole block as if it were, if you want to say as if it were the a the end of this block, it's just not associated with any token in the text. It's just a another token that comes after that. And I'm going to teach it to aggregate information. And then I'm going to go to the next block. And when I this here can attend to this, and to whatever was aggregated, this here can attend to these two, you know, only within your block, because otherwise quadratic memory, and it can attend to that thing. This here can attend to these, and it can attend to that thing. And again, for the next block, I'm going to first introduce again a special token, it can attend to the current block, like the last special token, and it can attend to this one. Okay. And from here on, we just rinse and repeat. So that 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 um, the these this can attend to this and this, this can attend to this and this, this can attend to this and to this, and the next memory can attend to all of the current block and to the last memory. Yeah, much easier. Okay, same thing. And now you can see much more clearly that this is essentially an RNN where these are the units of computation and then these are the hidden states that get filled by one segment and then read by the next segment and then again filled by that segment and the information can pass through the network through time because as I fill the next memory I do have the option of including data from the last memory. So learning to update that state um, using back propagation through time is what ultimately is going to allow me to have infinite context, if you will. <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly an RNN. That's exactly LSTM. Um, an LSTM long short term memory is an RNN that has functions that learns actively to fill that memory to manage that memory between the states. But um, for some reason, this paper makes a big deal out of comparing itself to this blockwise attention. And obviously, it's going to show that, oh, we crush the blockwise attention on these long context tasks. So if you look at the um, formula really quickly, I do think they um, so you have the input signal, and you have the um, keys and values of the current and uh, previous no of the previous blocks. So this is again, this is blockwise. So we're going to say we're going to have, uh, for example, m, m equals two previous blocks. So the, um, the two previous blocks, and the current block, 
which is as of yet ongoing, where we need to do causal attention. So we're going to produce queries, keys and values using this function here, they call it QKV. We're going to concatenate the current keys with the keys of the last couple of blocks. Uh, the current values also concatenate with the values of the last couple of blocks. And then we're going to perform self attention for each token T we're going to perform self attention across the keys and values. And remember, these here are the concatenation of the current block and the two last ones, let's say, plus this here, this is the residual connection from the input signal, then we're going to push that through the feed forward network. And again, there is this residual connection here. Uh, from this a signal. The transform this new method, um, I don't feedback attention is exactly the same, except instead of only producing queries, keys and values for the current uh, token set, we also produce key queries, keys and values for this feedback attention. Um, I have demonstrated it with one memory token, if you will, you can make that into 10, they make it into 64 of these memory tokens. But conceptually, it's exactly the same. So you're going to produce also queries, keys and values for that. You're going to concatenate not only not only the last blocks, but also the memories, the memory uh, tokens of the last blocks, or the last block, and the keys of the current block, the same for the values and you're going to perform self attention. Remember, the token signal is performed using self attention against this combined key value set, meaning every token can attend to the current block to the last blocks and to the memory. Um, and now you can already kind of see that this whole inclusion of these last blocks into this is just absolutely unnecessary. Now I'm not saying it's unnecessary from a performance perspective, maybe it's necessary. But the conceptual idea of this paper has nothing to do with including the last blocks of tokens, like also letting the current token attend to the last blocks keys and values makes kind of not really sense. So this could be stricken, and that idea would just prevail. Um, interestingly, not in but you also want to perform another self attention set this time not with the queries of the um, token set that you're currently working on, but this time with the queries of the uh, memory, because you need to produce the next memory. And you do that in the same way as you produce the signals for the tokens, you produce the next memory um, using self attention using the same same mechanism. Now, okay, I, what I find interesting is, there is no special, um, I want to say, network, there's no special component to compute the memory uh, that is different from the component that computes the token signal. Right? This here, this, um, sorry about the color, this QKV network here, and this here, they're, they're at least here in the algorithm, they're the same, the self attention, you know, the feed forward network right here, all of that is the same between the function that computes the token signal, and the function that computes the memory signal. Again, or additionally, in the paper, they say, there is no extra weights needed to add this to a network, it just you just need to fine tune the network. Um, using that. What that tells me is, indeed, they do seem to have the same function producing the next layer representation for the tokens, as and 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 they're going to fine tune that same function to also compute the memory representation to feed into the same um, layer. So usually in a neural network, your signal goes through layers, 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 and it transforms the signal, obviously, a bit layer by layer by layer, which means in 
in practice or in a no in a in a theoretical sense the representation that your layer produces for the next layer it's absolutely not guaranteed that that representation is also a good representation to feed back into yourself meaning that if you have the exact same function producing the next layer representation as the representation for this layer you are allowing a bit of a trade off um, where you dedicate some of your capacity some of the weights to sort of also compute that previous representation you, you understand like it's almost like you produce outputs for two different sets or for two different spaces two different embedding spaces and so on and whenever you have two different tasks going on it means that you have to divide your capacity and it means that you know potentially you make this signal here weaker for you know the the short term um thing traded off for this feedback attention thing and so on that's why a lot of long you know receptive fields opt for actually feeding this representation to the next layer here because that's conceptually the same space so this is for for one um there's also nothing really there's nothing really where the network can decide that this is now this is now for the memory because this function right here and these are the same it's it's kind of the function doesn't know that it's now computing a memory token except for the positional embeddings so it kind of has to learn to associate the positional embeddings and say uh, okay this now is a I need to kind of learn to store something in these things rather than um rather than compute the representation for the next layer now while this might work I have a different suspicion of why all of this or any of this actually might work or at least in large part I think what's happening right here is that there's a lot of things carried by the residual connections I think the you know the <laughs> you can just the fact that you just always add that residual connection it essentially means you have a linear that you have a linear path where we at the beginning you have a completely pass through path uh, if you will from from here all the way through like for forever potentially so um maybe the fact that it learns to remember things is okay can kind of store it once like it can do that somehow and then it will just sort of pass it through to the end so I do think the residual connections might carry a lot of the a lot of the weight of or a lot of the performance that we see in this paper and not necessarily that the network learns so smartly to update things and whatnot yeah in any way any case I hope you get a bit the idea of what's going on right here right we're essentially computing some extra tokens uh, that are supposed to retain information um, and pass those to the same layer again as input tokens and by doing so we open ourselves up to remembering things uh, for a long time and yeah that's that's an RNN I'm also not entirely sure whether they do backpropagation through time but they multiple times allude to it so for example here they compare with transformer XL they say transformer XL does stop gradient um, and we argue that this technique has a negative impact on the ability of the model to attend to past information specifically we show that using stop gradient results in a much shorter receptive field than the theoretical receptive field we believe that allowing the gradient to flow to the memory segment is necessary for the model to learn to carry important information in the memory segment which is true right um and then then they say uh yada 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 it does not significantly impact performance in practice this is primarily due to the prevalence of gradient checkpointing in llm training as memory often presents the primary bottleneck since the attention calculation is recomputed during backpropagation, the absence of gradient flow through the memory segment yields negligible consequence for overall gradient computations. So first of all, yes, gradient checkpointing is a thing, but I'm not really sure it's super applicable here. The problem with backpropagation 
through. I guess you could just recompute stuff all the time, and that works. Um, okay, but then also they say the absence of gradient flow through the memory segment yields negligible consequences for overall gradient computations, which I'm, I'm not sure what they're saying here. Uh, this if I were to just read this, I would guess that they don't do backpropagation through time, but they allude to it multiple times um, throughout. So my best guess is that they compute the full gradient including backpropagation through time where, you know, your gradient goes in here, there's sort of quadratic uh, complexity in here. And then there's linear complexity in the amount of blocks that you have, that you kind of add to that. Um, I would be super interesting, super interested to see the code and how this all works out. All right. I would like to in this case, um, briefly talk about their experiments, they do quite a number of experiments, which is quite, uh, quite cool. They often just compare with this blockwise self attention. Um, and in doing so, they obviously give themselves a giant, uh, a giant advantage. And even then, they're not that much better. I wish they would have just compared to like, a good LSTM implementation. Um, yeah, so if you look at the numbers, they often aren't that much ahead, then their own ablation studies show, for example, I told you they do more than one token of memory, right? They do more than they do 64 tokens of memory because increased memory capacity, right? Increased hidden state and so on. So they say in the flan one B model, we observe performance saturation on this one or on these tasks when the FAM length reached 64. Interestingly, performance declined when FAM length exceeded 64. This suggests that information compression is more effective when space is limited. Miller's law states that the average person can only hold about seven plus or minus two items in their working memory at a time. The limited space is a feature, not a bug. And I'm, I'm like, ah, uh, you know, like, I do appreciate when authors are honest about what works and what doesn't work and realistic about the performance of their stuff. Like that is absolutely fantastic. And I do see the problem with this specifically pointing out this one. But then at least like, say, look, m maybe there's still something to improve in this mechanism. Because clearly, having a bigger, uh, having a bigger size, having a big bigger hidden state available. Why does it hurt so much? Right? Like, clearly, there's something improved minor regularization or something, it could fix this. Or maybe it's because actually, there's another reason why this model out sort of performs well in some benchmarks. But don't tell me that Oh, no, actually, because of neuroscience, the limited space is a feature, not a bug. Like, no, 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 it's not. It's not something's wrong in this, the fact that it doesn't make good use of the extra capacity is a problem. That's not a feature. Um, yeah, so I, I don't, yeah, I don't want to hack around on this paper too much more. They do do quite a number of experiments, and their numbers aren't super duper great compared to others. They had an idea, they implemented it, they wrote a paper about it. And notably, what I appreciate is they also um, list quite a number of things that don't work or didn't work. And that's very, very cool. So these section here in don't is various ways, you know, to we thought of various ways to create feedback loops and transformers. This appendix summarizes our attempts that did not work well. We hope that this will save other researchers time when improving the architecture of feedback loops in future studies. And that's pretty cool. 
the fact that they go here and say, hey, look, all of these other things didn't work. They also have a few um, tricks in here to extend the context beyond training, because uh, if you uh, they don't train with giant context, yet they can extend at inference time to giant context or much more long context. And they do that with various techniques such as random state passing, which is also popular in in RNNs, um, random position offsets and so on, just sort of during training, teach the model to pick up things again, start fresh in between and, and don't rely on the fact that the data is always going to be of the same length as the training data. Yeah. Um, in conclusion, they say this paper explores the integration of attention based working memory, a concept from neuroscience into the field of deep learning, our goal is to ignite further research. Um, there are significant sets of problems to tackle it, ranging from feeding from refining feedback attention architecture to investigating the transfer of working memory to long term memory. Definitely, I mean, this is definitely a good conclusion. And yeah, so if you are interested in this, honestly, the thing that I would improve here, I do think it's a cool paper, but the thing that I would improve is to be much more sort of aware of the fact that this is essentially, this is like a different take on an LSTM, and to come much more from from that perspective, as from the perspective that this is a different take on blockwise, uh, blockwise sliding window attention is not. And instead of trying to keep reinventing LSTMs and RNNs, we could just sort of pick up that work again. And and continue that. That's it. That's it for me. Um, yeah, link is in the description. I'll see you around. Bye bye.